Madam Mayor and, and Honorable Council Members, Commissioners, thank you very much for having us. It's certainly uh, a pleasure, and, and to the constituents that, that I represent, thank you for letting us appear today. It's um, certainly nice to be back in front of smiling faces, which is sometimes in stark contrast to the passing the camera that we sit in. Um, so it's good to be home. We wanted to come by and just tell you a little bit about what happened up in Tallahassee. When I campaigned, the last time I was here, um, I was running for office, that was about a year ago. And through that process, I met all of the commissioners and the mayor and um, city manager, the attorney, and developed my own rapport with, with each one of you. And one thing that I told you is that if I were to be sent to Tallahassee, and so certainly I told my constituents this as well, if you sent me to Tallahassee, I would fight to allow our locally elected leaders to control the way that they want to run their city with the input of their constituents. And we often heard that on the campaign trail, that we want to keep government small, we want to keep government local. And lo and behold, I get to Tallahassee and we consistently see uh, the leadership there, a different party than I belong to, try to usurp the home rule authority of our cities. And they do it time and time again. And they did it again this session. They tried to take the decision-making power away from you. If you as a city council wanted to instill better and, and higher benefits for your city employees through wage theft protection, they didn't want you to have that authority. So what they did is they, they passed a bill that preempted home rule authority when it came to wage theft protection ordinances. Now fortunately, because of the good efforts of men and women in the Senate, that bill was gutted and eventually it only applies to, I think, sick time, if I recall correctly. But that is the theme in Tallahassee, is let's preach small government, but when we go up there, let's take home rule authority away. My commitment to you then and now is that I will continue to fight against usurping your authority and your ability to govern locally. I want to thank particularly Commissioner Maxwell for joining me up in Tallahassee. As you may know, Jeff Clemens and I filed HB 101 which was an enterprise zone for the city of Lake Worth. Uh, unfortunately, because of politics, it, it, did, it did die in the Senate. It was moving forward in the House, and that's not a reflection upon Senator Clemens, it just there was a chairwoman that did not believe in uh, bestowing tax incentives upon local governments, and so it died. We are committed to reintroducing that bill next year, and hopefully in the, in the off season we can work to uh, strengthen our approach. I did want to talk about two bills that I passed this session. I'm very fortunate to have been able to pass a couple of bills. The first one is, and I think it applies particularly important to the city of Lake Park. Um, if you drive through District 87, which is where I represent Lake Park Shores, parts of Lake Park, Green Acres, West Palm, Palm Springs, if you drive up and down Military Trail, you will see uh, what we call massage parlors. And they're oftentimes tinted out they have uh, neon signs that say open 24 hours. They advertise all girl staff. So I'm a former police officer. My father was a 25 year veteran of the Lake Worth Police Force. I think we all know what's going on inside of these. A lot of people, when I filed this bill, said, you know, what's the big deal, Dave? Do we really want to interrupt these activities? The offense of this, uh, that aside, what's going on in those facilities is actually human trafficking and sexual trafficking. And my constituents are often surprised to learn that in Florida, we are number three in the nation for human sexual trafficking. So what I proposed and what Senator Clemens proposed in the Senate was a bill to regulate these establishments, to close them down at night, between 12 o'clock at night and six in the morning, and to disallow the domiciling of the, uh, of the employees. What we found through criminal investigation is that young women are brought to this country with the promise of a good job. Whether they hear lawfully or not was irrelevant to me. My belief is if they're in this country, they ought to be protected by the law uh, when it comes to human trafficking and sexual trafficking. What we found was they're brought over here, promised a good job, they're forced into these sexual establishments, they're forced to, into sexual servitude, they're forced to live there. They oftentimes don't know the language, they can't reach out to law enforcement or they're scared to reach out to law enforcement and they're never allowed to leave and that becomes their life. So by restricting the operating hours from 12 to 6, we can now stop that man that's going in and out at 3 o'clock in the morning. 
the collateral damage is to the general public. If you live near one of these establishments, you have this constant travel at two in the morning, three in the morning. So it's gonna improve the quality of life of the people that live around this establishment. With that said, it passed the House and the Senate unanimously. It's on the governor's desk. I'm hopeful it will be signed. My father asked me, is this going to stop human trafficking? My honest response was, Dad, I don't know, but I do know that it will empower Captain Silva and his men and women in uniform to get into those uh, establishments. It'll allow our prosecutors to investigate these places, and it'll be one um, chain in the link to shutting these places down and protecting everybody, uh, regardless of their immigration status. The second bill I want to talk very briefly about um, is a sunshine exemption that I, that I put forth in the House and that Dr. <coughs> Clemens put forth in the Senate. In Palm Beach County, we're very fortunate to have uh, a commission called the, the Criminal Justice Commission. Uh, I'm sure some of the members of this, this commission sit on the Palm Beach County Criminal Justice Commission. The sheriff sits on the commission. The state attorney sits on the commission. As you elected officials are well aware, the sunshine, exam the sunshine law prohibits you from communicating with each other. Whatever the intent of that law is, it was frustrating the ability of the sheriff and the state attorney to investigate crimes and be able to communicate in private. So what we saw happen, and I should disclose that I'm a member of the Criminal Justice Commission uh, as a legislative appointee. What we found was the sheriff and the state attorney were, were refusing to sit on this commission because the moment that they sat on that commission, the Sunshine Law applied to them. <coughs> it was an unintended consequence. I followed a bill to rectify that, and fortunately it passed the House and the Senate unanimously. My hope is that the sheriff, the state attorney, our chief judge, our public defender, will now return to the public, uh, to the Criminal Justice Commission and participate. My other hope is that our model will spread throughout the state, that other counties will adopt our model, that we'll get all the stakeholders together, and that we can have an effective and efficient Criminal Justice Commission. With that said, it's an honor to serve. It's not always a pleasure to serve up there, but it really, <laughs> truly is, is an honor for me, and I appreciate the support, and thank you for allowing us to be here today. Good evening, Mayor, Commissioners. Um, my name is, is Lori Berman, and I'm a second-term um, representative, but this, I'm new to representing the city of Lake Worth, so I'm excited to be here tonight and talk to all of you. Um, the, you know, the one responsibility that we in the legislature have is to pass a budget, and this year, um, thankfully, there was a little more money in the budget, so we didn't have to cut things as much, and um, I'll let Jeff go into a little more about some of the things we tried to do in Palm Beach County. We got some things in the budget, then there were some other issues that occurred. Um, but uh, overall, I, I thought the budget was a good budget, and it was the first time I was able to vote for it. Um, we have raises for teachers, we have raises for state employees, we have some funding for the Everglades, um, so I was really pleased to support it. The, the one thing that was the elephant in the room was that we did not <coughs> expand Medicaid coverage. Um, and, and I'm terribly disappointed about it. I think it, it's a bad decision. We had the governor, and, and it wasn't a decision, it wasn't a Democrat versus Republican kind of issue. The governor supported the expansion. There was a plan proposed in the Senate by Senator Negron that passed 39 to 1 in the Senate to, <coughs> to take the federal dollars down. Um, and we in the House would not, would not the, House, the Speaker would not allow it to be heard on the floor. Um, and, and the repercussions are that Florida ha has about one million people who won't get insurance, uh, who would have been under this Medicaid expansion. And they're not the poorest of the poor, they're the working poor, because the poorest of the poor already get Medi Medicaid. This is really the working poor. And the other consequence is we continue to be a donor state. Our tax dollars are not going to be coming down here. They're going to be going out of state. We could, um, the estimate is something like $51 billion over 10 years if we took the Medicaid expansion. And we didn't. Um, so, you know, in the first year alone, something like $5 billion that we're going to be losing out on. And it's going to hurt our businesses. Our businesses community was also very much in favor of Medicaid expansion. The hospitals especially took a big lead, but in addition to the Chamber of Commerce, the associated industries, they also all advocated for expansion. So that was a big disappointment about the session. Um, I always like to tell you about the laws that affect you, direct law, saying that 
uh, citizens have, a, have the right to be heard at meetings. So you can, if you have a public issue, you have to allow the citizens to be heard on that issue. They don't have to be heard contemporaneously with when you vote on it, and you can put some restrictions, no filibusters, um, things like that. But um, that was one of the, the more unique laws that affect you directly. Um, uh, Representative Kerner talked a little bit about some of the preemption with the sick leave, and in addition, there was a preemption regarding um, agricultural areas, and I don't know if that affects the city as much. They're allowed to have their own signage, and, and the cities are not going to be able to have as much power over that. Um, uh, I represent mostly, um, for those of you who don't know, I represent <coughs> Um, I-95 is my eastern boundary. So I have a lot of unincorporated Lake Worth. I also have Atlantis, Green Acres, um, Boynton Beach, and a little bit of Lantana. And I have a tiny piece of um, the actual city of Lake Worth. And it's um, my pleasure to represent all of you. I'm happy to answer any questions. I will let Senator Clemens have the opportunity to speak. Um, and you know, please know that my door is always open and I'm always there for you. Thank you. Good thing that we are allowing public comment because Lake Worth has never had any. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for for uh, for letting me be here. Uh, it's good to be back, and um, certainly I uh, apologize for being late. I was giving out some awards to some elementary school students, uh, and that's, uh, that ceremony <laughs> ceremony ran a little bit. So um, I think that uh, that both Lori and and uh, I'm sorry, I should say Representative Berman and Representative Kerner have uh, covered it well, and they rep represented the city very, very well in the House, uh, so, so Lake Worth is in good hands. For those of you who aren't familiar with what happened during redistricting, I now represent uh, basically from North Lake Boulevard down to Hypoluxo, except for east of um, I-95, I go all the way down to Boynton Point Beach, and District 27 runs from the ocean to about the turnpike, approximately. So it's about 650,000 people, 15 municipalities, as well as unincorporated Palm Beach County, but I still have my office three blocks from here. And um, Lake Worth is, is where, I, where I meet with people. So um, happy to be here. A couple of things that we worked on this, this year that, uh, that affected cities or, or residents. Um, for those of us who have served the municipal government all know that we have to be very careful what we vote on. If it's related in any way to anything that, uh, that could endure itself to our benefit, so we, we disclose that, or in some cases, refrain from voting, but that wasn't the case in the, leg in the legislature. So we did pass a, a, an ethics law this year. It doesn't go quite as far as I'd, li I'd have liked it to, but at the very least, it requires a lot more disclosure, and, and hopefully um, uh, at least people now will know if we have you know, people in Tallahassee who are voting uh, to their own benefit. We passed a pretty comprehensive elections law. Again, it didn't go as far as I think we could have. Uh, it missed the vote on a few things, but at the very least, we have a local supervisor of elections here who is going to be opening her offices for the maximum amount of early voting hours, and I think that's a that's a good thing. Um, and I'll certainly answer any questions on that. I worked on a, a sober homes issue that is starting to affect a lot of the cities along the coast here, um, and it basically has to do with the, these unlicensed sober homes that are popping up in neighborhoods and taking over neighborhoods in many cases where you have companies that can afford to come in and buy six, seven, eight homes in a two or three block area. Um, and uh, it, it's had some negative repercussions on a lot of our neighborhoods in, in Palm Beach County. Uh, we weren't able to pass the bill uh, through all of, its, all of its committees, but we did get some revised language in the budget that's going to allow for us to at least look and see how many of these things exist. They're, they're all licensed, so we have no idea how many of them exist in the state of Florida. And that's something I spent a lot of time working on. They appointed me as vice chair of banking insurance, which is some sort of cruel joke, I think, on the insurance industry. Um, and I spent most of uh, a good portion of my session fighting against a uh, citizen's insurance bill that I think would have raised raise on a good portion of our constituents here in the city of Lake Worth who have citizens. And for those who don't have citizen's insurance, citizens sets them up the market for the insurance companies. So um, if insurance rates and citizens bump up, what usually follows is the private insurance rates tend to bump up as well. And we were able to, uh, to, to gut a lot of that bill throughout the process in the Senate. And then my good friends in the House passed a much better version that eventually when all of us were able to vote for it. It was a, a long, hard slog, and, and uh, we fought pretty hard on that issue. Other than that, um, I, you know, those are some of the, the big highlights. Uh, I also voted for the budget this year. It was my first time being able to do that, so I was really excited about that. We had some money in there for some labor work with <coughs> restoration projects. 
the governor put vetoed three of the four projects that we had in there. The one he didn't is up closer to the county line. So that was a big disappointment in my heart for that one. Uh, Representative Carter and I worked on uh, an issue for the sheriff uh, having to do with uh, him uh, sending out deputies with mental health professionals to deal with some of the issues. And we were able to secure a million dollars in the budget for that program, again, vetoed by the governor. Uh, so that is a disappointment. We think that that's something that could have helped prevent future tragedies for the people who may be suffering from some sort of mental illness um, and, and prone to commit violence. So we'll try that again next year, uh, but that was a disappointment. Um, was able to get some uh, some money in the budget for our state attorney and, and his workers' uh, uh, compensation fraud. So having said that, um, you know, yeah, overall, I think it was a much better year for cities this year, and we're happy to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you for having us. Thank you. I should say before we take questions, and I apologize, Mayor. Um, we were able to, uh, to, to pass a resolution recognizing uh, almost the last day of session as Lake Worth Centennial Day in Florida. Uh, I I'm going to pass that along. To, uh, <laughs> that was one of the questions uh, I was going to ask. Yeah, and uh, you know, it, again, it would have been better if it were an actual day of the centennial in June, but we wanted to pass it while we were in session. That's so, today. Yeah. It, it is today. It is today. <laughs> I heard Mary Lindsay's oh, voice. Uh, it would have been great if, it, if we were in session during that time and I could have gotten that date on it. But at, at the very least, we waited until the last week of session. Um, congratulations to the commission. Everything you're doing this year uh, is fantastic. I just wanted to pass that along. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you. The, the legislation dealing with public comment, which is a great idea, any truth to the rumor that when it come up on the floor in Tallahassee, they wouldn't allow comment. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think there, there was that they wouldn't allow comment. I think none of us wanted to speak. <laughs> I, the version I got was that there was no public comment permitted on this issue. Well, there's never public comment on this issue. You know, I mean, we, we take public comment in committee. Um, so, you know, I throw that out there. With, with, yeah, I mean, the, the, the legislature's hypocrisy knows no bounds. We don't follow the sunshine law either. And that's uh, something maybe we could work on maybe yeah. next legislative session. <laughs> I do have one more. One more uh, if, well, let me ask you, Commissioner, if you had the option and you didn't have to follow the sunshine law, would that be something that you would want to see dismantled? And so I, I don't have a problem with sunshine law. But I think I, we should all abide by it. I think all the way up to Tallahassee. And, and I you appreciate know, that. You guys should not be I, I think I don't disagree with you. I, think, so, I think some of the issues that the Sunshine Law presents make it more difficult to, sure. to, to perform our duties. It's well intended. Uh, but, um, you know, you can use some tweaks. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. But it, obviously it puts us at a distinct disadvantage at the local level. When you guys can wheel and deal and cut deals that affect us, and we don't have that opportunity, latitude to, to zig and zag and to, to weave and bob. Well, we need to weave, weave and bob and zig and zag. I don't want to speak for everybody else, but I, I don't disagree with that. On that point, you know, before you, you got here, a comment was made about um, some of the difficulties that the, this delegation has getting things done in Tallahassee because of the political uh, divide. I would challenge the three of you and the rest of the delegation that you reach out to local officials, local electives, and get us to light up the phones. Because in all my years of hanging out around here, I've not had one phone call from the legislator saying, hey, look, I need your help with this committee person or you know classic example of the enterprise zone so i mean your local officials who better to light up the phone lines in tallahassee and say hey look you know they, they should start hearing from the locals and i absolutely agree in the home rule issue you all are doing a, a, a great job of stripping away brick by brick it's got to stop it needs to stop I, again i don't disagree with you on that as it relates to the um the enterprise zone issue specifically, um, there were some leadership decisions made that they're just going to let enterprise zones ex expire all over the state. Um, and I had a fantastic meeting with your city manager earlier this week, uh, talking about some ways that we may be able to replace those with a different program that makes more sense. Um, and I'm going to start working on that this summer. He's giving us some great suggestions. And I, I do appreciate the work you all have done, <coughs> and uh, look forward to working with you closely. And I think you all know about my my initiative for this coming year, but I'll probably reach out to the three of you and look for your support. Thank you. I want to thank you for the work that you've done too. It's, uh, you guys did extraordinary this year. Disappointed about the enterprise um, situation, but really if we can look towards, um, you know, look, looking at it, and I understand why other municipalities and areas have used it and how they've done, 
but there hadn't been a lot of them before that I, I, I did read quite a bit. Um, but jobs creation is what we need here in the city of Lake Worth. And when we were looking at that, that it is initially, it was not a, a day that goes by practically that I don't hear about somebody looking for a job or asking me about jobs at work. It's a huge issue, as you know, well known here in our city. And when we talk enterprise zone, that's really what I'm thinking is creating jobs for our people. Um, yeah, I, I also worked on an enterprise zone bill for Delray, so I worked very closely with you all, and I know, and I appreciate that Commissioner Maxwell came up and worked with us and we tried to get it done. Um, so I know it was very frustrating, and we did have some leadership issues on that. Uh, but in terms of jobs, I just want to let you know, um, I will probably be doing a job fair. It will probably be October 9th, well, almost certain, uh, probably October 9th at the Lantana Road Library, and I will get everybody the information. Uh, we did one two years ago with Delray, and we had 800 people attend and 30 employers. So we're hoping for something like that again. Okay, wonderful. Yeah, keep me in the loop, please. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, well, I would love to do a great job. Representative Kerner, in particular, on that criminal justice bill. I mean, I had worked on that a year ago, researching it for the criminal justice commission. And we thought that was dead on arrival. I'm amazed you got that thing passed. And I went up there because we talked to the folks at the attorney general's office and the sunshine office. And they were like, "No way, that bill's not going anywhere." So I'm not going to do it. But I think that was great. Can I make a comment, <coughs> Madam Mayor? Uh, th there's a within the legislative circle. There's a, a disdain for sunshine and public record exemption bills, and maybe rightfully so in a lot of regards. We don't want to restrict the public to access uh, to uncovering information through that process. But my commitment is to put those issues aside if it's in the best interest of the community. And in this particular case, it was. I really believe getting all the stakeholders together is very important. With that said, I think I oftentimes get credit, and Senator Abruzzo gets credit for passing that bill unanimously which probably isn't, doesn't happen often, but it wasn't so much anything that we did as it was the input. You talked about the local officials getting involved in the process. Um, uh, Mr. Torsivia was uh, involved in drafting the bill. Uh, our Palm Beach County Economic Council was involved in lobbying the chairs of the various committees. The sheriff and the state attorney were involved in working with other legislators. So it demonstrates the, the value and the utility of, of everybody getting involved. And so I intend to embrace that model further when I go back up there. Thank you. Commissioner Zerny. Thank you. I wanted to thank you all too. Um, but at, you know, maybe in uh, reaching out, as says, to make ourselves available to you. Uh, when, <coughs> for instance, I, I'm sure it was a different time when they had that vacation rental thing come up on the state. I don't think we got very much notice or were involved at all of having any kind of notice. With any of those kind of things that you think uh, affect us, um, certainly uh, I, I know all of us would be more than willing to go and, and rattle some cages too. Yeah, and I, I think maybe we need to do uh, something pre-session because in an off election year, in an election year we, we get elected in November and we start going to Tallahassee and we're up there for you know, two weeks in November, a week or two in December, a couple weeks in January, three weeks in February, and then the entire months of March and April. We see anywhere from 250 to about 350 bills across our plates on the floor, probably more in actual in the committees. Um, so once the, the first starts flying, you know, it is is it's almost it's almost too late. Maybe we would be better off if we and then I'll take this responsibility upon myself. If we try to do a little more work, especially in an off election year when a lot of bills are gonna be filed earlier. We can start filing bills now as opposed to having to wait until after we're elected in November. Um, to, to kind of uh, get together with some league folks, with, with Commissioner Maxwell, who's going to serve as his, uh, his chair of the league, and, and, and try to look and see what kind of things are coming down the pipe to affect us. Because otherwise, if it doesn't come before a committee that we sit on, we don't see it until it gets to the floor. Mm -hmm. um, and, and sometimes it gets to the floor on the same day that 42 other bills get to the floor. Um, and that's not an excuse. I mean, it's, it's our responsibility to do a better job, and I've already committed to a, to a couple of residents that and commissioners that will do that. But, um, maybe we, we can try to do a little bit more pre work uh, before the session starts. Be great. Really appreciate it. Glad you're still around the corner. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Commissioner Morrison. Yes, he is around the corner. I have a pleasure meeting with you this week. Um, I also want to reach out. There's something that I've been working on with uh, PBSO, Captain Silva, and, and um, I want to reach out to you. Um, we, we have an issue with um, a lot of people being arrested 
bad guys being arrested and getting out. Uh, we spend a lot of manpower. I've already brought it to the Neighborhood President's Council, and we're kind of putting our ducks in a row, so I want to reach out to you afterwards. I know that the powers to be want to get them in, get them out, no cost. Um, it's cheaper to get them out of jail, but it's not working for us as the city of Lake Worth. Um, we've got a lot of bad guys being put back out into the neighborhoods, and, and we need to try to figure out what we can do. So I just wanted to plant that seed. I'll reach out to you. Um, the, I've already met with um, Shelly Vanna, and uh, her. she sits on one of those committees, so she's going to try to work internally. But um, it, it, they're putting us, putting them right back out into our neighborhoods, and um, it, it's, it's creating a big problem. But thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right. We'd like an update in six months, okay? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Commission uh, liaison comments, reports. Commissioner Zerdi?